So today in lecture we covered film f fin film interference, which is the result of an incident beam of light that hits a surface that separates a medium N1 from a medium N2. And we saw that if N2 is optically thicker than N1, for example with N1 being air and N2 being water, the reflected beam 1 will undergo a phase shift of 180 degrees or one half wavelength lambda. Now the second beam 2 will be refracted on the interface and then reflected at the second boundary from where it's then going up and out of the medium. Now because it is getting reflected here at the medium boundary between water and air again, there is no phase shift because phase shift only occurs when reflection happens on the boundary between an optical thin and an optical thick medium. If it's the boundary between an optical thick and an optical thin medium, there is no phase shift on reflection. What you should notice though is that ray number two traveled further than ray number one because it entered the water, went until the end of this container, hit this boundary and traveled back up. So in sum, it traveled about two times the thickness of this water film further than ray number one. And because of this, it will also appear to be phase shifted when it comes back into air and travels alongside ray one. Now, fin film interference is the case where the phase shift between ray 1 and ray 2 is so that it can cause either constructive or destructive interference. A um, concrete example we looked at was a soap bubble. A soap bubble, when it is in a gravitational field, um, experiences a force due to gravity which causes the soap liquid to run down. So the top of the material of the bubble is going to be a lot thinner than the parts that are closer to the ground because the liquid runs down towards the earth. Now two phenomena can be observed. The first one is that interference at the thin part of the bubble is going to be destructive while the interference at the rest of the bubble is going to be constructive. The result is that on the top you don't see any light, it's just dark. At the bottom you're going to see all types of colors reflecting based on the thickness of the bubble. How exactly the thickness of the bubble plays in we'll see in a second. But important here is to understand that on top I'm going to get no light because of destructive interference because my bubble is very thin and when my bubble gets thicker I'm going to see constructive interference for some of the wavelengths. Here's a way how we can picture this. So if I again draw my um, soap bubble being thin on top and thick at the bottom I can mark the thickness of it being T and T changes it gets thinner as I go up and thicker as I go down. The optical um, thickness or density, the index of refraction is also shown here. For air it's 1 on both sides and in the center where I have the liquid solution I have 1.3. Now let's picture an incoming wave that hits the surface boundary between air and water. That is going to be reflected. Because I'm going from optical thin to optical thick medium, this reflection will undergo a 180 degree phase shift. But not all of the incoming wave gets reflected. Part of it travels through and gets reflected at the backside of the of the soap bubble. Now the part that gets reflected here gets reflected on the interface between an optical thick and an optical thin medium and undergoes no phase shift. But the light traveled a little bit further. The orange light had to travel. So first the incoming wave, the green light had to travel to the end of the bubble. It's one T distance and then I had to go one T back. Okay, so in total the orange light traveled two T further. So if we recap this, I have the incoming green wave which causes the reflection at two points at the first boundary in purple with a phase shift of 180 degrees or one half lambda. 
and the reflection at the very end in orange with a phase shift of 2t. Now constructive interference will always occur when my first reflection, the purple one, is in phase with the second reflection, the orange one. For this to be true, I have to have the path phase difference to be the same, meaning one half lambda has to be equal to two times t. An example for this would be light of wavelength of 400 nanometers that travels through a bubble where it is um, 100 nanometers thick. For this case, I would get maximum interference. Now we can see that as t changes, there's always, with a changing t, a different lambda that causes this maximum amount of interference. Therefore, I'm seeing different colors constructively, constructively interfering as I go along the bubble. And at the very top, where my t is super thin, I'm having the case where t is almost zero, so my phase shift is 120 degrees for the purple one, but my orange one, because t is almost like zero, comes back exactly like the green one that came in. And so the phase shift between um, the purple one and the orange one, for the case where t is super small, is going to be exactly 180 degrees, which leads to constructive interference. And therefore, I do not see any type of light from the thin parts of the soap bubble. I hope this um, clarifies some of the concepts that were a bit tricky um, to get across in the lecture. If you have more questions about this, feel free to post some comments to this video or ask me questions in class. Bye-bye.